Our summer is wrapping up and we're easing into another school year. I've been starting this week on putting together my kids' checklists. We start our year slowly and simply. Join me for another day in the life. This is our last week before we open up our books again and get to the academic part of our homeschooling. We homeschool all the time. This is a lifestyle for us, but the book work we do, we keep to pretty much a traditional school year. And the reason for that is that we have so much garden and farm work around here during the spring and summer. And so we, um, we need time to do that kind of work during the summer. It takes a lot of hands-on. Our kids help with all of it. This week, we have been canning tomatoes. My husband did some beets. We did beans. A lot of things are coming in, and I'm trying to get as much of it done before we get going next week with our new homeschool year. If this is your first time on my channel, I'm Sherry. I'm a Christian homeschooling mom to 10 kids. I'm married to my high school sweetheart, Nelson. We've been married for 24 years. I love coming on my YouTube channel every week, encouraging other homeschool moms in the great work that you're doing with your kids. I also write on the blog, ourlifehomeschooling.com, where you can find a ton of resources for homeschooling. Book lists, I talk all about large family life over there, life skills, I share our curriculum, lots of good things for you to find over there. I've begun to see a pattern that we start our homeschool year basically on the week when a lot of our harvest is coming in. Next week when we start, um, two of our days are going to be taken up with doing applesauce. And I've thought about switching, pushing this back a little bit, but the truth is I just really want these this extra week on the other end in May when um, we're just getting our garden started. So although it is very exhausting and we're doing a lot of work right now, it is great seeing our shelves fill up and it's very satisfying to provide food for your family. This is just a really busy time trying to get all this food in and starting a new homeschool year. But because we have a very relaxed style of homeschooling, we can let our book work fit around our family life. My goal for this week was to get started on my kids' homeschool checklists. Their checklists are the part of the day where they do their independent work. Our day is fourfold. We start with morning time, then we have chores, next is independent work, and then the last thing we do after lunch and a break outside is to read aloud in the afternoon when our little ones are down for a nap. So I have all the work that we're doing for morning time. I've put this together in a notebook that you can find on the blog, but their checklist is the next part for me. and. I started, I decided to start with our oldest and work our way down. Now our oldest son is graduated, but the next oldest is our son, Luke. He's 16, he's going into 11th grade. When our boys hit high school, I turn all of their homeschooling over to my husband. I learned this from an older, more experienced mom, and it really made a lot of sense. I talk a lot more about this in a video I did on homeschooling boys. I'll make sure to link that for you if you want to look at it. So I don't have to put together Luke's checklist. I'll sit down with my husband. I do go ahead and register him for the classes in his drop-off co-op. I buy his books and then I kind of figure out what credits he's getting, talk with him about it. And I sit down with my husband, but my husband is the one that checks in with him with his work. And that works really well with teenage boys. While I've been working to get ready for our school year, I still have been reading to my kids in the afternoon. And this really is my favorite time of the day. The little ones are down. I've been reading through the Chronicles of Narnia series. I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe several times to my older kids, but I have actually never read through the whole Narnia series. And so I've decided to do that with my younger kids. And we've really been enjoying it. 
This, we're reading through The Horse and His Boy, which is the third book in the series. And I'm hoping that it continues to hold their attention all the way through. Sometimes we'll go through a series and the kids will just kind of get tired of it and want to move on to something else. And honestly, sometimes I get tired of it. Um, but this one has been really good and I think we might just make it all the way through. Back to putting together my kids' checklists. I started with my oldest daughter, Jenna, who's going into 10th grade. I took a look at what we did last year. I started first with the classes that she's taking at her drop-off co-op. This is where our kids get their high school credits. Our older kids are in two co-ops. One is our family co-op that we go to every other week and the other is a weekly co-op where they get their high school credits. Here, my daughter, I just love seeing my kids picking up some of these fun projects, whether it be sewing or baking, crocheting, just um, sometimes the boys will be out making projects with wood, just seeing them being creative and thinking and trying new things. I love watching them explore their interests. This is one thing that doesn't really change that much once we start a new homeschool year. Our kids still have plenty of free time to try projects like these to do things that they're interested in. When I sit down with my kids to do their checklists, I like to just ask them, what are you interested in? What do you want to learn about? And just kind of listen to what they have to say. It, it always surprises me. Um, a lot of times they've thought about this. There's things that they want to study or there's something that they just don't know that much about and they want to learn about. Um, in the older years, in middle school and high school, I really do shift more towards an interest-led style of learning, a relaxed approach, because I want them to start taking ownership of their education and to just experiment and learn about what avenues they're good at and what things they want to try. When I sat down with Jenna, we looked at last year's checklist and filled um, in with new the new classes that she's taking this year at her co-op. She's also doing, I think, two credits at home. So we talked about what she has to do to complete those credits. Um, we looked at some of my favorite book lists and she picked out some books that she wants to read this year. One thing that gets me excited about starting our book work again is that it's a really good accountability for me to be checking in with each of my kids. It's my one-on-one -on -one time with them, or it's, it's kind of built in one-on-one -on -one time. It makes me sit down, see where they're at, look at some areas that we need to work on, and make a plan for those. Can like, look, just pretend it's really long. Mm -hmm. And it's getting like a little. And here, all the bad passes. 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 All that is really cute. Yeah. You, that would be a nice this gift. You could even put a plant in there. Yeah. In there, if you had some kind of plastic, like a that. little succulent, if you had some plastic in the bottom yeah. to catch the. And then.
We got a couple of packages here in the mail. This big one, I think, is my son Luke's Spanish books. I'm pretty sure. Um, so we'll see what this one is. I have spent more money on my older kids just with them being in a co-op, a second co-op where they get some of their high school credits. And so um, our oldest son didn't take the Spanish class, or actually he, he did. This is a consumable. So we got Spanish here, and then this is a package I've been kind of excited about. I am doing a unit I want to do some units on Pennsylvania history. And so I've been looking for the best Pennsylvania history state resources for homeschoolers and I found some really great ones and I'm super excited to do a blog post on everything that I find. When we start a new homeschool year, there's actually not a whole lot that changes in our daily routine. We'll start doing morning time again and then my kids will do an hour or two hours, depending on their age, of book work in the morning. Our older kids do a little bit more. Um, and then they have a lot of free time to do things that they want to do. In my earlier years of homeschooling, I used to worry about little things like what they were missing out on when the rest of the world went back to school. And what I've learned over time is that in homeschooling, if there's anything that they miss out on, there's something else that they're getting that they wouldn't have if they had been in school. I no longer worry about things like that. Instead, I think the opposite. I think about what they would be missing out on if they were in school. Eight hours a day, five days a week, if they weren't able to have all these experiences at home and out in the real world. I got another package here. Just getting lots of packages today. This one is one I've been waiting for. It's another one of my Pennsylvania State History resources. Um, this is going to be a good blog post for any of you who live in Pennsylvania. Um, this one is by Susan Kemmerer. I heard her speak one time at the local homeschool conference and she was great. Um, so I can't wait to look at this. Pennsylvania Keystones, the history of a state and nation. And then this is the student activity pack. So this is gonna be really fun. I started working next on my daughter Afton's checklist. I skipped Brinley because she was in the middle of a sewing project and Afton was just reading a book. So I stopped and worked on her checklist next. If I don't get to all my kids' checklists, if I don't have them all ready by the first day of school, I don't stress about it too much. I try to make sure they have something for reading, writing, and math on that first day of school, which since we don't ever end our math program, we just stop wherever we are and then pick up again. Um, they, they just pick up where they were last year will pick up their copy work and either pick up where they left off or they'll decide what copy work they want to do. We just ease into a new homeschool year. If there's anything I've learned in our 14 years of homeschooling, it's that we worry about way too much. We just start slowly and we pick up the pace as we go along. We have a very relaxed approach if you're interested in learning more about this, I highly recommend the course How to Take the Stress Out of Homeschooling by Kelly Crawford. I'm going to leave a link for that below. She's a mom of 11. She's been homeschooling for many years. The relaxed approach that she shares in her course is very much where we have landed over the years of homeschooling our kids. Thanks for joining me as I am getting ready for a new homeschool year. I do one video a week on homeschooling encouragement for everyday moms.